Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. There's an old scientific saying that goes, we don't see things, but light bouncing off of things. So think about that and keep it in mind. Now let's talk about some things you're gonna need to know for this video. When it comes to mixing colors, it should be noted that there are two ways of doing it. Now the first one is how colored light interacts with itself. And the second one is how chemical interactions produce color. Now subtractive color mixing, which involves chemical interactions, is when two or more dyes or pigments are combined together in order to make a darker, more complex color. And additive color mixing is when you're using two or more lights and placing them onto each other to see how they interact with one another. With enough of them, you can actually get what is called white light. This can be seen in the chart I provided. Now, both of these concepts work with the receptors in the eye. For your eye truly only picks up three colors, blue, green, and red. Every other color but those three is dependent on the quantity and the combinations of those three colors. And this video is going to be about white light and how color reacts with things. Now white light can be given off from the sun, light bulbs, and even heated objects like fire or when you superheat metal and it glows. And white light itself is a part of visible light. Visible light is electromagnetic energy, which our eyes have the capability to pick up and understand. Even though visible light is a very tiny part of the overall range of electromagnetic energy, visible light is all we had to construct our complete understanding of everything from. Now, the colors within visible light can be remembered by a simple acronym, ROYGBIV. ROYGBIV stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. They all appear within the rainbow, and when all focused together, can make white light. And the same can be done in reverse when you shine a beam of white light into a prism filled with water. First done by Isaac Newton himself. And white light's the reason why we're able to see colors. And what's interesting about this is if we shine all the colors of the rainbow in an object, we typically just see certain colors. We don't see all the colors of the rainbow. And well, it's quite obvious why. The colors that are being absorbed are taken in and anything that's not is bounced off and that's what our eyes pick up. So if you're seeing a color, it's everything that was not absorbed, rejected in a sense. And if something's black, that means it's absorbed all the visual light it can, leaving very little for your eyes to pick up. So in other words, the color we typically perceive as plant life is green. Though ironically, that's the very color plants reject it bounces off of plants so technically things like grass and trees are every color but the color you see oranges are only orange because they are literally every single color but orange we see coal as being black because every single color is being absorbed and leaving little to nothing for your eyes to pick up and snow is white because it's absorbing nothing leaving all the white light to be bounced off so you can probably see where i'm getting at the only color you see of an object is the color it's not for the object itself absorbs the color that it is. If the only color you're able to experience is what is rejected, what is not being absorbed, is that the real color of the object? So then what are the colors that are being absorbed in the everyday things that we see in our life? And well, this is where additive color mixing comes into play. Now do note there are some technical limitations to what I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna do my best to give you a general understanding with what I have the ability to show you. The colors within additive color mixing are red, blue, green, magenta, cyan, and yellow. Even though it looks like it's orange, technical limitations are at fault. So assume that it's yellow. So then let's first just look at grass. And yes, grass can come in an array of different green colors, but when you shine white light down on grass, white minus green equals magenta. So objects that are green are roughly this color. Things like broccoli, trees, algae, and much more. They absorb colors that are magenta. Next we have a ripe tomato that is red. White light minus red equals cyan. And this would be the actual color that is absorbed by things like tomatoes, strawberries, blood, and even redheads. The color that they absorb is cyan. And you thought bluish hair wasn't natural. Next up are bananas. White light minus yellow, <coughs> yellow, equals blue. Meaning that the color that is absorbed in things like bananas, sunflowers, and your little yellow rubber ducks is blue. And what's not being absorbed is yellow. Snow itself could probably be considered black because it's completely reflecting all white light where things like tar are black because they absorb all the white light. And that's one of the reasons why things that are black absorb more heat than things that are white. Or technically, 
that's reversed. For the object actually reflects white light, it's black. Oh my god, in my head. And lastly, and most interestingly, this concept can also get involved in the concept of skin color, which obviously follows the same rules. I mean, the color that you see on my skin is literally everything that is not being absorbed by it, meaning that I'm everything but this color. And then if you take a person with very dark skin, their skin is absorbing almost all of the white light, meaning your eyes get left with barely anything to receive. So then what's our actual skin color? The color that it's absorbing, or the color that's bouncing off of it? Now obviously this doesn't mean that we gotta stop what we're doing and just see the world in a completely new way. What we have right now works just fine. I mean obviously changing everything would get chaotic. I mean we as humans are limited in the physical experiences we can have by what our senses allow us to experience. But what's great is our brains can do what our senses cannot. Our brains can understand that there's so much more to the universe than what our senses give us the capability to understand. So with everything you heard, my question for you guys is, when visible light hits an object, is the object the color that is being bounced off, or the color that's being absorbed? What do you think? And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, you're watching The Factoid, and remember, never stop learning. Thank you. If you like my videos, please stay in tune for more. More videos on the facts that almost everybody missed.